Let's say we're based in Cape Town and we want to supercharge our collaboration with our colleague based in London. Here's how we can do this in just four steps using Power Query parameters. We both have these workbooks called Sales Data, which has a table with our product sales for the month and a table for the price per unit for each of the products. London has an additional product, PP006, which Cape Town does not have. The most efficient way to enable this collaboration is by creating a parameter in Power Query. Here's how to do this. First, let's upload our files into Power Query. In a blank workbook, go to Data, Get Data, From File, From Excel Workbook, and let's get our Cape Town sales data. Let's select our sales data workbook, and not the individual tables, as we want our colleagues to update only a single data set for their source. And let's click on Transform Data as there are some transformations that we want to perform. Here in our Query Editor, we have Sheet 1 and our Price Data Table and Quantity Sold Table. We only need these last two tables. Let's call this query Sales Data Source. Next, we need to create our reports that reference the source data. Let's right-click and reference this query. And the first table that we want is our price data table. So let's click on Table so it expands just this table. And let's call this query Price Data. Then let's reference our Sales Data Source query again. And this time, let's expand our Quantity Sold table. And let's call this query Quantity Sold. Now with our Quantity Sold query selected, in the Home tab, click on the drop-down next to Merge Queries and click Merge Queries as New. In our Merge Queries dialog box, we have our first table, Quantity Sold. Let's select our second table, which will be Price Data. And let's select the common column Product ID in these two tables. We will leave our join kind as left outer. And we can see that Power Query has matched all 16 of our rows. And click OK. And we get a new query called Merge 1, with a column called Price Data, which has all our tables from our Price Data column. Let's expand this column, and let's only select our Price Per Unit column, as we already have our Product ID column. And uncheck Use Original Column Name as Prefix, and hit OK. Now, all we need to do is select our Quantity Sold column, hold down the Control key, and select our Price Per Unit column. And in the Add Column tab, go to Standard, and select Multiply. And we now get our sales values. Next, let's select our Month column, and in the Transform tab, go to Date, Month, and select Name of Month. And we get our month names. Next, in the Transform tab, Let's click on Group By, and let's select Advanced. We want to group by month and product ID. Let's call our new column Sales Value, and we want to sum by our Multiplication column, as that's where our sales values are, and click OK. And we get our sales values by product ID. Let's sort this in descending order, so that our sales are from highest to lowest. And let's call this query Sales Values by Product ID. Now to create our parameter, in the Home tab, let's click on Manage Parameters and click New Parameter. This Manage Parameters dialog box pops up. Let's call our parameter File Path. You can add a description if you like. I'm going to leave it blank for now. Let's leave our type as any, and for our suggested values, Let's select List of Values. Now let's go to where our Cape Town Sales Data Workbook is stored, which is here in my C drive. And let's right-click on the workbook and select Copy as Path. Let's go back to our query and here in our List of Values, let's paste our file path. Now we need to determine which section of our file path we should delete. But before we get to that, 80% of my viewers are still not subscribed. If you're getting value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could please hit the subscribe button, as this will really help me hit my 2023 goal of attaining 50,000 subscribers. Now let's get back to our video. As our parameter is dynamic, 
we need to delete the part of our parameter that is not dynamic and which should not change. So it's this last part here from salesdata.xlsx. This is the name of our workbook. Remember this part needs to be the exact same name for our own workbook as well as for our colleague's workbook, else this will not work. Also to note that our table names in our sales data workbook, which in this case are called price data and quantity sold, also need to be the same in our workbook and the same in our colleague's workbook. Now let's delete salesdata.xlsx from our file path. You can decide if you want to keep or delete the backslash. I'm going to delete it. For our default value, let's select our file path again, and the same for our current value. And hit OK, and we get our file path parameter. Next, we need to replace the section of hard coding in our source step of our source query with our parameter. So let's go to our sales data source query, and here in the formula bar, we can see the code for our source step. And here we have our file path, which is in red and double quotation marks, as it's hard-coded text, which means it's not dynamic. This is where our parameter will make our source dynamic. Let's delete everything from the first quotation mark up until this last backslash for sales data. As remember, we removed it from our file path parameter, so we need to keep it here. And let's type file path, and the IntelliSense brings it up. So let's select it, and insert the ampersand sign, as this joins our parameter in our sales data workbook. And remember to insert the quotation mark before the backslash, so that we can indicate to Power Query this is hard-coded text. And hit enter, and we've now made our file path dynamic. Next, let's get the file path of our London colleague's sales data workbook. And let's go back to our query and click on Manage Parameters. And let's paste the file path here. And let's remove the double quotation marks and everything from the last backslash. And hit OK. Let's test this out and change our parameter to our London colleague's file path. And let's check out our sales value by product ID query. And our query has correctly updated to our London data. As remember, Cape Town didn't have product PP006. Now, if you want to know how to create a dynamic file path in an Excel cell to which your query can connect, and all you need to do is update the file path in Excel, and hit refresh, and your query updates with the new file's data, then I highly recommend you watch this video here.